everyone has plenty of skills. What they do not know how to do is get clients. Hi, it's Kathy Guggenauer, business coach and trainer of Virtual Expert Training. Today, I'm going to share with you five, the five steps, and these are like overall steps, to get clients. Do you know that that is the number one biggest challenge that all virtual assistants and all virtual experts that I have ever talked to have? I want you to know that each of these steps have many, many steps under them, but these are the top five biggies that you need to take into consideration in order to start getting high paying clients. Step number one is specialize. Now, I know there's a lot of people who are like, I just want to be a generalist. Well, you can be a generalist and we do need administrative assistants who generalize, who are generalists, but you're only going to be paid $25 an hour maximum. I got my tiara on today. I thought it looked a little crooked. I had to fix it. So do you want to do that? If that is what you prefer to do is work as a general administrative assistant, great. Just know that $25 an hour is going to be your cap. If you want to earn more than that and you want to feel even more fulfilled becoming an expert in what you do, then you want to specialize. How do you specialize? Well, you identify exactly who it is you want to work for. That's called your target market and exactly what it is you want to do for them. Those are your services. A lot of people call this a niche, N-I-C-H-E. There's a lot of information uh, or a lot of different ways that people pronounce niche. I'm from Missouri. This is how I pronounce N-I-C-H-E, <laughs> niche. Niche is when you have a narrow target market and the services that you provide to them. That's your niche. Step two is researching that niche, researching those clients to find out what problems do they have that they need solved by you, a virtual expert. If you already know what services you would like to offer, then you can identify for sure through your research whether or not those clients need that service. And if they do, you have a winner on your hands. The other thing that you want to consider when researching is if they need the service you're going to offer all year round. If they're not going to need the service you offer all year round, you might not want to specialize in that because it's not going to be as well paying. Or you might want to see if you can specialize in it all year round and just have different people in different areas of the country. Let me give you an example. So in Missouri, where I live, we have really cold winters and we have really hot summers. So real estate agents, for example, they don't sell nearly as much, nearly as many homes in the winter as they do in the summer. Their season, their biggest selling season is April through October. The rest of the time, it, they can't get people to leave their homes because it's too cold, it's too icy, it's too snowy. In other parts of the US, for example, Florida, the high season is actually just the opposite from Missouri because it's warm there in the winter. So a lot of people go to Florida in the winter to buy homes. So their peak season is more like November through April, just kind of the opposite of what Missouri is. So if you had clients in Missouri and in Florida, then you would have, and you did services for real estate agents, then you would have work all year round. And another place that you could get work all year round is California. Because their weather is pretty much the same all the time, they pretty much sell all the time. So that's an example, and I'm sure you can think of other things. For example, landscapers. If you were working for landscapers and all they did was lawn work, then you might not have business in the winter. But if in addition to doing lawn work, they also remove snow, there you go. You have business all year round. So take that into consideration. Their pain points, I mentioned their problems that you're gonna solve. They also are called pain points. And if you can figure out what those are through research, and you can absolutely do that because I have done that, and then your service solves that problem, you have a great target market and service to provide. So that's step two, research to learn more about your target market the problems that they have or pain points that they have 
and if the solution that you have, the service that you offer, solves that problem. Step three, create marketing materials that speak directly to that target market that you've identified and that clearly demonstrates that you understand their pain points and that describes how you're gonna solve it, okay? So what are marketing materials? Marketing materials can be things like your website, your LinkedIn profile. They can be PDFs or flyers that you create to distribute. They can be lead magnets. Those are freebies that you give away to get people on your email list. So all of these are ways that you can use that information that you've gathered about your target market to speak directly to them and let them know that you can help solve their problems. Now, the reason you want to speak directly to them is if you make it broad, if you speak to everyone, then no one knows you're speaking to them and they don't listen. But if you know them personally, and I mean really understand their lingo. So for example, real estate agents, which I already mentioned, they have a whole different vocabulary than anybody else does. They don't call their target markets target markets. They call them farm areas, okay? They don't have clients. They have buyers and sellers, right? So when you talk, you write your marketing materials and you speak your target market's language, you're going to have instant credibility they're going to instantly perk up and say, oh, she knows me. She understands me. She knows my challenges. And then they'll also want to listen to the solutions that you have. Now we're on to number four, and it is create a marketing action plan. So what is a marketing action plan? That is, it can be a 30-day, a 90-day, a six-month, or you can create an entire year. Now, what I often like to do is have an overview of what I want to do for the entire year and then have 90 day plans set out very specifically. So in other words, overview of what I want to do for the whole year in marketing. And then every 90 days, I come up with exactly what I want to do in those 90 days for my marketing action plan. And that is what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, who's going to do it, how much it's going to cost, so your budget. So for example, is your target market on Facebook? If they are on Facebook, then you probably want to do Facebook marketing. I do not recommend as a virtual expert that you spend any money doing that. Do not buy Facebook ads. Do not buy Google ads. You do not need to do that. You can do all of this organically. So all you have to do is talk to your target market. Let them know that you understand their pain and that you can solve it. Now we're on to the last one, number five. Take consistent action. Now I know that might sound simple, but it really isn't. Because if you start doing marketing, but then you just do it sporadically, it's not going to help you. You have to do it each and every week, month, year, consistently. I would prefer that you do less marketing but do it every single day. And by less marketing, I mean uh, less different types of marketing. So for example, if you're thinking, well, I'll do Facebook and I'll do LinkedIn and I'll do YouTube and I will do a lead magnet and I will have a website and I will have LinkedIn. If you're thinking about all of those things, I'm gonna do Facebook Live, I'm gonna do webinars, okay? All of those are ideas that you could do for marketing, but you're not able to do them consistently. Don't do them at all. Choose one or two that you can start with and do consistently. Map it out so you know exactly when you're going to do it each week and do it because that is going to increase your lead generation. Those people coming to you saying, hey, I'm interested in working with you, which is what you want more than hit and miss marketing. So let me just summarize those five steps. One, specialize. Identify your target market and the services that you will offer to them. That's your niche. Two, research to learn everything you can about that target market, their pain points, and their jargon, how they talk, what their language is that they use, so that you can speak their language and so that you can help them see that you understand their problems and that you have the perfect solution. Number three, based on everything that you researched and learned, create marketing materials that speak directly to that target market. 
Number four is create a marketing action plan. So you know exactly what you're going to do for at least 90 days, ideally a year, and then every 90 days um, expand on that yearly plan. And the fifth one, take consistent action. So I hope that has benefited you. I know there's so much more to learn about all of this. And if you want to learn more, I highly recommend that you apply for a breakthrough session with one of my breakthrough specialists. You can learn more about my virtual expert training program. In my training program, I literally take you step by step, teaching you how to research, how to identify who you should work with, what, you're, what you would love doing. You have an assessment that helps you figure out who you'd love to work with, what you'd love to do. Then you research them. I teach you exactly how to research them. And then you begin creating your marketing materials. I teach you how to create all your marketing materials, including how to do the LinkedIn profile and how to create your website page by page. It's very, very step by step. So if you're interested in learning more about that, click the link, apply for your breakthrough session. It's a free 30 to 60 minute session. And your breakthrough specialist will be a graduate of my virtual expert training program who will talk you through answering any questions you have about what it takes to become a virtual expert about the training program itself. And they will also assess whether or not you're ready to become a virtual expert right now. It's Kathy Guggenauer. Hope you enjoyed this session. I'll see you back here next time. Bye everybody.